You know that like Double or Nothing is going to be awesome. It's got a bunch of great matches oh, yeah. on it. But there's a difference between like a self-contained good show and like episodic great shows right. where not only is it a great show, but like you can't wait for the next one. Exactly. What's ha- what's going to happen? What's going to continue in the storyline? Exactly. And that's what the uh, I think that's what they need to work on more than anything else. Brian and v. When you watch AEW, what's the story of virtually every single television match? You always know who's going to win, but the person who's going to win tries to have a banger with the person who's going to lose. They they love this 50-50 thing. Tony loves guys going out and having great matches, even if the story you should tell isn't that Will Ospreay and Lee Moriarty are basically at the same level. Yeah. But Will got him tonight. Yes. That's not the story of Will Ospreay. Some dork decides to hit the ring. Oh, my God. This fucking nerd... Decided that he was going to run and dive into the ring. And he fucking did the shittiest dive, rolling dive into the ring you've ever seen. And then he pulled a Vince McMahon and tried to stand up and collapsed. Probably tore both his quads. This fucking security guy wiped this dude out. He would have been better off standing on the train tracks Mm. than standing there and get run over by this guy. What an idiot. Is there a better name for a guy trying to work on dynamite than the dynamite kid? This guy looks... Eerie. Exactly (laughs) like the dynamite kid. Yes. And I'm sure Dax probably watched a bunch of dynamite kid matches, and he decided we're going to do Bret Hart versus the dynamite kid tonight. Adam Copeland versus Kyle O'Reilly. This was so great. And I bring up again, when he wanted out of the judgment day because he didn't want to do Hocus Pocus, and they removed him... And then they never did Hocus Pocus with the Judgment Day. And now here he is doing Hocus Pocus with Malachi Black. Hey, the match was awesome. Pick some stipulations for the Brian Avenue live show. Best of Free Falls match in Vegas over Memorial Day weekend. Remember we did Granny Bingo on the Christmas show? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was a debacle. <laughs> ah. Sorry. Speaking of debacles. Musical chairs, two out of three falls. It's not a bad one. There's only two of us. Yeah. <laughs> one chair. It would be quick. And I'm going to get that YWF title. Are you now? Yeah, I told you. It's right over there. You said you hadn't seen it in 20 years. I'm like, dude, it's right here. Who's dent? Whose head put a dent in this? Mine. Is it yours? Craig says it's oh, so his Craig. head. Craig does have a very large head. It would dent things. That's true. The New Japan TV title. YWF World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. I forgot something last week, but it's for, it's for the best. Uh, it's a nice teaser. Uh, Can you tell best. us what it was? Yes, what's next? Soaps. He kidnapped somebody. No, he, he caught her. He didn't kidnap her. <laughs> that is different somehow. Your Honor, it wasn't kidnapping. I just caught her. So what really happened is she kidnapped some people, and then he kidnapped her. No, he caught her. So he kidnapped her. Well, if you call it that. Oh, well, I, I do wouldn't... call it that because you can't you can't just capture somebody. Why not? Because that's not allowed. Brian, do you that have to do that to everything? Yeah. Ooh. Other than Levi's, what were the cool name brand? Wrangler. Tough, Tough, skins. Tough skins. Jordash. Do you know what it says? It says guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did. We guessed. They're wrestling two fucking geeks. They win, obviously. And this fucking celebration these guys did. Oh, I mean, they're like... Get a shot at me and Sean! Sean! Give me a high five, brother! Ah! Holy shit, Dude, we fucking beat fucking... these nerds! Yeah! And they're going crazy! A live report from Dynamite. From beautiful Everett, Washington. We saw some friends, including... One producer, Rob. Did see producer Rob. We did see producer Rob, didn't we? He walks into the the restroom. Okay. Don Callis was in the men's room. Okay. Rob walked into the men's room. Rob saw that he was at a urinal because he recognized his shiny shoes. You know, old Rob ended up right next to Don Callis. Amazing. The stall next to him. Amazing coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he said something to the effect of, Mr. Callis, you know, it's really nice to, uh... At which point Don Callis said, Fuck you! (laughs) 
Fuck off! Get out of here! Excellent. What the fuck was this guy thinking? You think you're gonna go strike one conversation with this guy? After pissing all over yourself? Like, hey, Don, what's up? You wanna wash your hands? I wanna wash hands together? What the fuck was he thinking was gonna happen? I was so disgusted when I heard this story. You can get, like, super frustrated about this booking or that booking or whatever, but the shows are always good because you have so many great wrestlers having good matches. The storylines don't really get you excited for the next show in an episodic way. But you know that, like, Double or Nothing is going to be awesome. It's got a bunch of great matches oh, yeah. on it. But there's a difference between, like, a self-contained good show and, like, episodic great shows right. where... Not only is it a great show, but, like, you can't wait for the next one. You what's ha what's going to happen? What's going to continue in the storyline? Exactly. And that's what the, uh, I think that's what they need to work on more than anything else. The Elite do a promo, suggesting, which was later absolutely confirmed, Eddie Kingston will miss Double or Nothing. That sucks. Uh, the Young Bucks, they're getting their own shoes at Champ Sports. Yeah. But, you know, they're not over. <laughs> no one cares about them? Yeah. They signed a deal with Reebok yeah. for their own brand of shoes. Yeah. Jack Perry turns and dumps his drink over Tony Schiavone's head. And people, Tony says, son of a bitch. People were furious. And we couldn't even hear him, but we could see Tony. We could see him. <laughs> and Tony, Tony Schiavone, I can't say enough good things about this guy. He is fucking great. She warns us, Serena Deeb, you'll end up like everyone else in Vegas, on your back, with an ass in your face, wondering where your dignity went. Word. The crowd begins to chant, please retire. Twitchy simply says, I know, I know, you all want me to retire so I can go into all the halls of fame, but I'm not ready yet. And they go, ah, fuck, ah. <laughs> I'm pissed at him now. Jericho's always got some new character, some new, you know, evolution or whatever it's, whatever you want to say. This is my favorite one in years. It's awesome. <laughs> and years and years. What's their tagline? We're the best wrestle. We're the best wrestle. wrestle. The best shouldn't be everybody. Is Swerve the best in the world? Well, show me. Don't tell me and then I'm go 50-50 with Brian Cage for 20 minutes. Show me. And the Shibata, using his phone, explains, that man is too large to be wearing a floral print. I was dying. That was very funny. So then they hit Willow's music, and she got a way bigger reaction than Mercedes. The last time we were in the ring together, I walked out as a champion, and you didn't walk out at all. And the fans were like, Whoa, they pop big for that one. And then Mercedes slaps her, and Willow gives her the powerbomb through the table. That honestly got one of the biggest pops of the entire evening. Yes. This was a great main event, okay? But, like, I watched Okada the entire time. This guy worked this entire match in first gear. <laughs> and, like, he's so fucking good, I don't think anybody noticed. He's limping, and it's only been, it hasn't even been two months yet since he broke his foot. And he did get hit by a bus, and his head was fucked up, and he just got hit in the head with a fucking beam. So there's no way this guy should be in this match. No way. Well, Noam says, I know it was either Javon or Trick. And Lash says, it wasn't Trick. And throughout this entire show, Noam is just staring daggers through Lash Legend. This is a great storyline. This is a great episodic weekly storyline. This is the best thing on NXT right now. Something yes. is going on with Lash Legend and Trick Williams. And my guess is the reason she knows it wasn't Trick is because she was with Trick. Mm. Ava's going to her office. Some woman stops her. And I'm staring at her. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Is that Brinley? Is that Thea? Who is this? And then, thankfully, she gets a graphic. Carly... Bright. Yes. Who the fuck is Carly Bright? It is another random athletic blonde. We have about a dozen of them on television. Dude, I got... I, but it's more than that. My rant's later. They all are taught to do yes! the same shit. What is the difference You've between... you got to do a cartwheel. Carly Bright. Got to do a roundup. Sol Ruka. Got to do the splits. Brinley Reese. Got to do a moonsault. Thea Hale. Got to do a dive. All these just athletic women with long hair. You can throw in Kalani Jordan and Ren Sinclair. It, they're all clones. Oro Mensa versus Javon Evans. Two very talented, still green guys doing some very incredible things here. I love this match. It doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how many tag matches you've had in every major company all over the fucking planet. If you're working a match and Ridge Holland has to get a hot tag... 
Ain't gonna get no heat. <laughs> this poor guy. You're not gonna find a bigger Shawn Michaels fan than me. I've never interviewed the guy in my life. And if I could interview him tomorrow, and I only had one question. One. His whole career. I would ask, the fuck is going on with Ridge Holland? Can you please explain what's happening here? I don't get it. The wrestling in these, this match done by these two professional wrestlers was awesome. It did not fit into the show at all. It seemed like a mistake. Like they showed up at the wrong building and they just put this match on anyway because they had nothing else to air. But it's not the, it, it doesn't seem like the product they want to produce because this is good wrestling. And they produce bad wrestling. Rob is confirmed that he will be here in studio on Sunday. I can't, I can't believe Rob's stepping into the spotlight. He is coming into the studio on Sunday on the Brian Avenue Show live. He will answer these allegations of urinal gate <laughs> live here in studio.